Yeah, you know what? It's take that last part off, please. Yeah, don't talk about the accordion because uh, hey, the only the only guy that I know has accordion is is Ramon Ayala and Los Tex Mex. So. <laughs> Welcome, my people. It's episode number four. We're so excited to be back. Thank you for all the support that you guys are giving us, checking out the show. We got so much great to talk about today. We have uh, Bad Bunny and Rosalia's latest video, and they're talking about a rumor going on that they're dating. Conejo malo, conejo malo. Porque la noche, la noche fue. We also have Maluma, Maluma concert, Juancho tour. Hay una cosa muy hueputa. Que es que Papi Juancho y Maluma Baby apenas están pesando. We're going to talk about that. And vamos a hablar algo muy, muy de la música que los hace bailar banda. Día uno de grabaciones. Qué maldición Banda MS con Snoop Dogg. Tenemos a una persona, Eric, que los va a dar mucha información de lo que es banda y la música mexicana. Let's uh, actually jump right ahead. Uh, let's talk about Maluma. Like they said, at the end of the tunnel, there's always a light. And the way that we're seeing this light is because the concert series are going to start. Something that we're looking so forward to it because they just announced um, last week about the Juancho tour with Maluma. And I think it's like over 30 stops. So that looks pretty good for us because as promoters, Adrian, correct? Guess what? Absolutely. We got to start Absolutely. working back again. Well, like you said, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, this is a very uh, promising news. Um, Maluma actually just had a new uh, a new uh, uh, record come out recently. I was in Miami, Tony and Eric, and everywhere I looked, I saw huge billboards uh, promoting his new album. Uh, so you can see that there's a big push behind this Colombian artist uh, that is, you know, a big reggaeton artist uh, all around the world. And uh, it, it, Tony, so this tour is for this year in September, correct? Yeah, the tour starts in September. Uh, believe it or not, actually, we're fortunate here in the West Coast that it's going to start September 2nd in Sacramento. And from, from there on, it goes, you know, West Coast, East Coast. Uh, but the good thing about it is that, you know, like everybody else, everybody is saying, wow, we're ready to go back to the concerts. Well, everybody's taking a chance. Big promoters, like the ones that are putting together, got in touch with the label. Uh, and also the artists, and they're working something out where this might be a 75% venue capacity, but at least it's something, you know, meaning everybody's saying that by, by, yeah, by July, you know, everybody should be vaccinated already. Hopefully that's the case because that makes us want to start, you know, going out to the events and stuff like that too. Not only that, but uh, Julio, what is his, uh, Iglesia, the comedian also has the tour starting. So you're seeing, you're seeing those, those dates that were canceled last year starting back again on the map. So fingers crossed that everything goes good. I'm praying with you. I'm praying. But can't Tony, wait. isn't there also, I know, seriously, isn't there also another, um, I think you mentioned prior of us starting the show that uh, EDC, which is one of the largest electronic festivals, <laughs> that looks like they're going to happen this year as well? They, they actually put the green light already. You know, as you know, that's an outdoor festival that has pretty, I think that's probably one of the festivals that started the whole... Of course, like everything else, you know, they want you to wear your mask. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good sign. Like I say, I think, you know, uh, I woke up on Monday. Um, I, was, uh, I was out of town. And when I start seeing all this news, you're like, boom, your lights light up. Because it's, you know, for us in the entertainment business, ever since March of 2020, we became flatliners. Uh, yeah. Now our hearts are starting to pump little by little. So that's good. Listen, the, the, rea the reality is that I'm sure you guys are both going to agree with me is that people want to go out again. People want to socialize. People want to go dancing. People want to see live music. Nacho, I'm telling you, this is for reals. People want to go and have a beer for happy hour with their friends. They want to go to live sporting events. <laughs> So I think, like you mentioned, once we have over 50% of the country vaccinated, which we hope that's going to be after, you know, by this summer. I'm um, too. Hey, Eric, um, you had some, um, you had some, uh, some, a little bit of some chismes, as they say in Espanol, about Bad Bunny and Rosalia. Oui. <laughs> so, this, so, this, so this is crazy. As you guys know, Rosalia and Bad Bunny were on SNL. 
Huh? I guess. And I don't know if you guys have seen this new song, La Noche de Anoche. And it's a steamy, steamy, steamy song. Like you think these people are, you know, in bed having, having some fun because I'm, some good times. Uh, you know, they're they're dancing La Bala in reggaeton. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to show a little clip of it here. But, you know, Rosalia is one of the hottest new, obviously, talents. And she, she hails from Spain. You know, she's been dipping a little bit into like reggaeton and putting a new vibe on like the flamenco, like flamenco pop. I don't know what else to call it, but yeah, that's about right. It's got a really amazing flavor. And this song, it just, it's over the top. Yo sé que esto no volverá a pasar, pero si volviera a pasar. The performance. You, you, I think you mentioned that the performance was extremely steamy, right? Like there's something going on there behind closed doors. <laughs> Tony, you want to you give us a little bit of detail? Well, you, know, you know, actually, like, like everybody else, you know, everybody talks, but after the show that they did on Saturday Night Live, you know, it looked like they were having some, some type of like, you know, bing, bing. <laughs> That's all I have to say. We, it's a PG show, so, but it does look like, you know, hey, Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny, baby. For some reason, he's a bad bunny. Me gustan boricua, me gustan guana. Because he must be doing some bunny stuff. <laughs> he's hopping around. Hey, cuidado con la zanahoria. Watch out with those carrots. But Everyday items in your kitchen, in your house, that you can use as sex toys. Roll out my body and get a little bit of stimulation first, a little bit of blood flow before I have a self-masturbation session with my handy-dandy carrot. Look, you know, talking about Rosalia, uh, you know, she also did, she also did a, a video with uh, The Weeknd. And so, you know, her crossover is big crazy. Bad Bunny, you know, being, being as big as he is, you know, that's good that they're that collaboration back again. You know, it's making things go bigger. And with that show that they did, the video, it's a it's a big 10 for them. Yeah, I got to meet Rosalia. She's the sweetest, sweetest, most humble person you could ever meet. Their video that they came out by Bad Bunny and Rosalia is number 10, right? I mean, overall. Oh. In the entire world, this right is in now, the in world. YouTube. Yeah, I mean, this song I mean, is just this is incredible. They say, "Hey, so talking about let's uh, our th our third topic. Let's talk about banda. You know, banda music to me is like a red Red Bull." Red Bull gives you wings. You know, meaning because the energy that's in it, the people that are, that are dancing to it, you know, different type of banda that have been going on for a long time. Eric, tell us about the latest, you know, stuff that you've been working with when it comes to banda. So another super exciting crossover that's happened is Banda MS. <laughs> and Banda MS, we were lucky enough, Latin Life was lucky enough to be one of the, the the few outlets, um, TikTok and Spotify and us were selected to do an interview for this song uh, with Banda Mesa and Snoop Dogg. Uh, and this song is just- Snoop Dogg! <laughs> it's Snoop Dogg! <laughs> you know, talking about, about innovation and crossover and all that, this song really just blew all everybody's perceptions of what, you know, people don't imagine like hip hop and banda, but really a lot of the people that like banda also like hip hop. You know, as you talk about that, um, that collaboration with Snoop Dogg and Banda and Messi, um, it came from actually a good friend of mine's promoter out of LA because he does a lot of stuff with Snoop Dogg, um, Bobby D Percents. And that's where, you know, they, they got together in the office and, you know, Snoop is a big fan of Mexican music. He loves the food. He that's loves true. The I, saw, I saw that. Let's let's. The song, I, I, is it Que Maldición? Que Maldición. Yes. Que Maldición. Right. That's the and song. I think, que I think Be Becky G also did was part of that somehow, which is pretty amazing collaboration of those three artists. And stuff like that with Snoop. Wow. That I just, that. I'll put it. I'll put it here. But you know that song was such a hot song. Even even uh, <laughs> you can see uh, Avinash. Uh, a, a 20 month old that we got here in the house, they're running around the house. He was yeah. dancing to the song. So I'll put this, I'll put him dancing here. 
¿Tampa te gusta la banda MS? In the video. Well, I like Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg dancing to Banda. You know, he has his like, you know, West Coast, you know, dance moves. It's a, it's amazing. Like we, last show, we talked about crossover reggaeton. You know, going into these other, you know, uh, working with these other artists. And I talk about Banda. But Eric, uh, can you just talk a little bit about Banda music in general? Just a little bit. Of, you know, you, I know you're the expert in that in that subject. You know, um, Banda, Banda it has has blown up in the last like five years. You know, Banda Mesa, who we're talking about now, sold out. I think three sh three shows at the Staples Center last year, and wow. we you know we worked with a lot of their shows around the country. They were selling out everywhere: New York, Chicago, San Francisco, just everywhere selling out. And you know, Banda has really been has been around for a long, long time. And I'll tell tell you guys a story that's gonna. That's going to make you laugh when, uh, not not this time, but I'm going to tell you in future stories, my history with Banda, because I am from Mazatlan and my last name is Osuna. And if you know anything about that, like that's that's everything in, in Mazatlan. Like everybody's name is Osuna and everybody is into Banda. But the... The, so you the, have like a hundred, a hundred primos? Is that what you're saying? You have like two hundred primos? <laughs> Those parties in Mexico, man, are crazy. So when I go to Mazatlán, can I just say, hey, I'm, I'm Eric Ozuna's friend, so I can no, get all the videos? Mazatlán es diferente. Te sorprende diariamente. Did you just say that you're a cousin, man? Cousin. <laughs> so they, there was a lot of bad bunnies in in Mazatlan. Let's just say that a lot of bad bunnies. <laughs> name name, name the Suna. <laughs> name <those Suna. laughs> but you no, know but the music. Going back to the banda topic. It's so much energy. It's and you know everybody that loves this music, it it goes to the heart and soul, just like salsa, just like anything else that that is from our culture, is from our roots. It's like it's embedded in our blood, right? It's it's just a part of us. Absolutely. And, and that energy on it and stuff like that too. And you know, Banda, uh, talking about Banda, Banda's been along, like you said, for a long time. You know, Banda Recodo. So there's the good thing about the old classic Banda, believe it or not, the young new generation knows those songs because the parents used to dance to it. So they 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 know the music, but they don't know the artist. So like I said, Banda MS and bands like that. Banda Recodito have made it to like the mainstream where you got, you know, a lot of people listen to it now and even the young market. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You're because, still right. You know, you know uh, Tucanes is a separate kind of separate kind of genre, but Tucanes came out with uh, La Chona. And that's. Chona, of course. Up, and these kids are, probably don't even know like where it came from. And it, and it, it, it reinvigorated Tucanes. And now, you know, they're super popular. In fact, they're touring right now. But Tucanes has been has been around for a long time, and now they're again popular because these kids. And I'm curious, Tony, like when when you're playing music, how do people react when you play like La Chona or Banda just out of nowhere? You know what? Those are like the crowd starters for any DJ because uh, you know you put that song up and you're gonna get the crowd. Everybody's dancing. Even the even bravo, bravo, chona, nadie te puede igualar. Even the you know like I tell DJs that are starting, hey. These are like the 10 songs that you gotta play. These songs are gonna get your crowd out there. You gotta, you know, like play because that's like the injection that the crowd needs to pump it up. The rest is history and what it, what you do after that, you know, because but, it's- But, but Tony, you, you, you play like, you play even with mainstream crowds, right? And everybody starts well, dancing you know, to it. Like, and, and this is pretty much a way, but as a DJ, you gotta kind of get off your song. You mean, you gotta, you know, you can go from a banda to like a merengue, you know, you, you know, what I mean is that you kind of have to, like they say, the DJ is the quarterback of the party. If when you play it, people are either going to sit or dance it. And the way it works is when you see everybody dancing on the dance floor, even if they don't know the music, but they like the energy of it. I want to see both of you guys dance quebradita. That's all I want to see. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm going to be sitting in the corner, okay? Like, <laughs> like, in a, like in a dance in high school. I'm going to be like, no, I'm st staying here. It was a great energy, like always. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Adrian. We talked so many good topics about Bad Bunny, Rosalia, Maluma concert. Hopefully, that does well. And Banda, of course, regional music. There's so much to talk about regional music, but we're, we got more on next episode. So thank you once again. And uh, Eric.
Yeah, and don't forget, next time we're going to be talking about a rooftop party in Colombia. Among other things, we're going to have some special guests. Woo. We're going to have uh, a Banda influencer come on and some other cool things that are happening. So we're looking forward to having everybody come back next week. Please support the show. Please give us your comments. Let us know any kind of uh, uh, subjects or anything that you'd like us to talk about. And I think Eric's gonna announce on the next show the first winner of one of the giveaways by Latin Live. If I'm not, if I'm not wrong about That's that. Correct. That's correct. And uh, th thank you guys. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Tony. We'll see you Always guys a pleasure. Thursday. Don't forget to sign up, guys. Sign Thanks, up. Guys. Sign up. We out. Adios. Adios. <laughs> nice.